May the name of the Lord be highly exalted, both now and forevermore. Amen. We are the Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. This is a homily for Easter Sunday delivered by Reverend Father Solomon Alfonso Salbugast, the assistant parish priest of Immaculate Conception Catholic Church of Agabon, via the Pax Media Communications of the Catholic Diocese of Ikorebene, Nigeria. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us on this day of joy briefly reflect on the theme, Hallelujah, the word we know has risen. Christ is the word, the Logos, who was with God before the foundation of the world, took flesh, suffered, and gave his life as a ransom for many. This he has accomplished through his death and resurrection. No rational human being actually rejoices on what he or she has no knowledge about. We therefore express a deeper sense of joy on this Easter day because of our knowledge on the resurrected Christ through the church. Our knowledge of him could either be communal or personal. It is communal because of the truths of faith taught us by the church. It is personal because of our individual assimilation and vivid expression of what the church exposes to us. Within the perceptual grasp of every human person, every journey that has a beginning necessarily has an end. Our 40 days Lenten journey of prayer, fasting and almsgiving that began on Ash Wednesday culminates this day with the joy of Christ's resurrection at Easter. Note that the whole essence of joining with Christ during this special season was to create a more intimate communion with God. If so facto, any prayer offered to God at length that never led to communion with God was and remains a mere wastage of thoughts and words on the self. Again, any fasting that never resulted to communion with God was simply a mere starvation and suffering to the body. And any almsgiving in the course of a lengthened journey that never led to communion with God was simply a waste of material resources. So, our expression of joy on this day could possibly depend on the way we journeyed with Him in faith during the period of Lent. To us, therefore, a good Lent lays a sure foundation for a good Easter. Let us now briefly look at the question on resurrection as it concerns our faith. Dear friends in Christ, the truth of the resurrection is the center of the Christian faith. Without the resurrection of Christ, the Christian faith wouldn't have had any true foundation. Resurrection as a word is gotten from the Latin word resurrexio, which means the act of rising from the dead. Within the context of our celebration, it is the rising of Christ from the dead. And from the perspective of our Christian faith, it is the rising to life of all those who died in Christ. In a generic sense, however, it is an instance of a thing or a person regaining new usage or importance. Let us now make a brief consideration on the question of the resurrection using the raising of Lazarus back to life as a case study as recorded in John chapter 11, 38 to 44. Could this event of Lazarus be considered as resurrection? Within the context of our Easter celebration and the Christian faith in Christ, this cannot fully be considered as resurrection in the strict sense of the word. The fact the act was indeed one of the miracles of Jesus Christ to strengthen the Christian faith in Christ. The fact is, Lazarus was raised to life, but Christ arose from the dead. If it were to be considered as resurrection as in the case of Easter per se, then Christ wouldn't be seen as the firstborn from the dead, as we find in Colossians chapter 1, 18, Revelation 1, verse 5. With the rising of the Christ we knew from the dead, the truth of the resurrection was manifested. Our Christian faith on the resurrection is based on Christ. This is because it is only in Christ's resurrection that every Christian gets an assured hope of the resurrection of the dead on the last day as professed by Martha in John chapter 11 verse 23. The fact remains that Lazarus who was raised to life died again, but Christ having risen from the dead, never dies again. His resurrection is eternal, and we Christians share in that eternity. 
This is our faith. This is our hope on the one we know, the one we love, and the one we celebrate. Christ. We celebrate the resurrected Christ not merely because of what we hope to gain, the grace of our resurrection on the last day, but simply as a proof of our love for him in response to his love for us. This reminds us that faith is indeed man's response to God. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church number 142 would tell us, we simply therefore profess our faith to him saying, we have accepted your gift of the self to us and have promised to dedicate or rededicate our own selves to you. This is indeed a manifestation of the truth that love is indeed a gift that is received and given as stated by Pope Benedict XVI in his Caritas in Veritate number 5. On this day therefore, we celebrate the fullness of Christ's love for the whole humanity who gave us everything. Yes, indeed, all. Let us now look up our experience of the, of the resurrected Christ in the light of John's Gospel chapter 20 verses 1 to 9 which is the gospel of this day. Today's gospel reading presents to us the experience of the empty tomb by Mary Magdalene, Simon Peter, and the disciple whom Jesus loved. Let us have our own experiences from these three characters. First, Mary Magdalene was the woman whom Jesus cast out seven demons as we see in Luke chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. She was one of the earliest and faithful followers of Jesus and was with Jesus till his death and burial. As a faithful follower, therefore, she was the first to experience the resurrection event by beholding the empty tomb. Noteworthy here is that she never understood what such an experience meant and so ran in search of knowledge. Meeting with Peter and the other disciple, she said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have led him. John chapter 20 verse 2. This was indeed an expression of insufficient knowledge of the whereabout of the body of Jesus. So, communicating his insufficiency to Peter and the other disciple was simply a search for a full knowledge of Christ to strengthen her faith the more. Fellow Christians, never claim sufficiency of knowledge on this early pilgrimage when actually you know nothing. Nobody has a comprehensive knowledge of the church's teachings and of Christ. The way Christ reveals himself to you may not be the way he does to me. We need a sense of spiritual direction and teachings of the faith from our elders if actually we want to remain consistent in loving and worshipping the resurrected Christ. Where you are confused in the faith, dear friends in Christ, please stop and ask questions from the right source like Mary Magdalene. This will enhance your spiritual nourishment. Second, the role of the person of Peter is of great importance in this gospel episode. Going out with the disciple whom Jesus loved, Peter arrived second, having been overtaken by the other disciple. But having stooped and looked into the tomb, he saw knew, understood, and believed on the experience as an elder in the faith. This was because Peter knew Christ and fully believed in him. Remember that it was the same Peter who expressed his knowledge of Jesus as a Christ when Jesus asked the apostles, Who do you say I am? Matthew chapter 16 verse 15. Through Peter's knowledge and faith in the risen Lord, the other disciple whom Jesus loved including Mary Magdalene came to know, understand, and believed with joy too. As Easter people, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if our knowledge, faith, and joy of this Easter does not lead others to that same faith, then our knowledge and joy of the resurrected Lord is indeed empty. Who is this disciple whom Jesus loved? This is an energy question that we need to understand. The name is not plainly stated, and we know for real that Christ loves all without segregation. If this is so, such disciple is me and you. The surprising news of the empty tomb from Mary Magdalene made the disciple to run even faster than Peter, but never went into the tomb, nor believed till Peter ascertained. 
dear friends in Christ, let the joy of Easter not make us outrun our source of faith. Do not outrun your source of joy. Do not outrun your source of grace. Do not get overexcited on the mere news of Easter Sunday. Joining others to shout, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Why the heart remains as empty and as dubious as it was. Be humble to follow the directives of the church. What then is our mission as Easter witnesses? In accordance with the first reading of today, from Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, verses 34, 37 to 43. After eating and drinking with Christ at the table of the Eucharist as Catholic Christians, the evangelist look or reminds us of our individual and communal commissioning. Simply put, the resurrected Christ has commanded us to preach to the people. Little wonder the concluding rite of the Mass says, it's a Misa Est. Misa has its roots from the Latin word Missio, which means to send forth. We are therefore commissioned at the end of every Holy Mass to go forth bearing witness in all we do. Why? That we may fulfill God's will in our daily lives. Every Christian therefore becomes a mobile scripture, not just in words, but more effectively in deeds. The contents of this preaching is to testify that Christ alone is the one ordained by God the Father to be judge of the living and the dead. Since as Christians we believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, we are therefore not called upon to become judges to one another, and especially to those who do not know Christ, and especially also to hardened sinners. Rather, we should, like the apostles of old, bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Conversion and reconciliation back to the Father becomes then the task of every true Christian who knows the risen world. Let us note here that consistency in the practice of the acquired virtues is indeed a necessary requirement to show that we remain in the love of the Christ we know. During the period of Lent, we prayed, we fasted, we gave arms, we loved, we avoided all forms of temptations and occasions of sin just to keep ourselves pure. After Lent, Easter and beyond, how do we now see those practices? Do we consider them as Lenten observances that vanish with the season, of, with the season itself? Or do we see them as lifelong practices? Do not be surprised that some Christians could see Lent as a mere burden to the body and so consider the coming of Easter as a license to return to the old self, a putting on of the old and a putting off of the new, instead of the reverse being the case. Do not return to former sinful ways. Do not relax in the practice of the Lenten virtues. The Lenten practices are practical virtues that need to be continued after the period of Lent. By so doing, Christianity will not so be a mere religion by name, but also a way of life in practice. We are reflecting about the reason why we know. Therefore, in faith, the act of the covenant in the Old Testament enveloped the world which brought forth victory for the people of Israel at their respective battle encounters. The word contained in that Ark of the Covenant was the law, the commandments of the people. As we see in Exodus chapter 25, verse 21, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 2 and 5. And Christ, therefore, is the fullness of that law. The prophets of old, however, prophesied on the word of God, and it brought liberation to the people of Israel. And Christ is himself the fullness of the prophets and the manifestation of the prophecies. The Blessed Virgin Mary herself enveloped the world as the Ark of the New Covenant, as we see in Luke chapter 1, 26 to 56, and Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, which brought forth sanctification, joy, and redemption to the whole human race by his cross and resurrection. Therefore, our true knowledge of the resurrected Christ, which is the Word, is never an empty knowledge. Let us understand that it is a knowledge and celebration that brings sanctification, conversion and reconciliation, joy, restoration, 
salvation and liberation, and indeed an assured way that enables an intimate union with God here on earth in preparation for that heavenly reward of eternal communion with the Father on our own day of resurrection. A share of my experience. In the year 2015, a car had an accident at the fence of Funeral Paul Seminary and some assaulted. The nearby policemen came to their aid and none was hurt by the grace of God. When we rushed out to witness what had happened, and as we thanked God for saving their lives, one of us said, that is why it is good to always go to church. To the surprise of all, one of the victims responded, it is not a matter of going to church, rather, it is a matter of knowing Christ. Dear friends, to know Christ is to love him by keeping all his commandments. John chapter 14 verse 15. Let us examine ourselves. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as a priest, do I know him? As priests, do we know him? As deacons, do you know him? As religious, do you know him? As seminarians, do you know him? As catechists, do you know him? As heads of different congregations and societies, do you know him at all? As lay faithful in your respective ranks and files, do you know him? If yes, congratulations and be more intimately united with him. If no, learn and seek to know him like Mary Magdalene sought to know the whereabouts of Christ's body. If not sure, assess your faith. And then make a fundamental choice, for you cannot serve and rejoice over a God that you do not know. Note that even the devil knows Christ. That was why when the Jewish exorcist who tried to imitate Paul by using the name of Christ to cast out devil was questioned by the devil himself saying, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Acts chapter 19 verse 15. Our mother, the little virgin Mary, knew her son Jesus Christ and remained his faithful and consistent follower from conception till even after his resurrection. As we declare and celebrate our knowledge of the resurrected Christ at this Easter, through Mary's intercession, may we be found worthy to be known by Christ, who is the true judge on the last day. As we claim to know Christ, may Christ know us too, and not reject us on the resurrection day, like the foolish virgins, saying, I do not know you. Matthew chapter 25, verse 12. Know Christ and know peace. Know Christ and know true happiness. Know Christ and know true love. Be Christian, be Christ-like. And may the good Lord bless you in accordance with the spirituality of this Easter season in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter to you all.